Hello class, today we're going to be looking at an artist. Her name is Minnie Evans. Minnie Evans was born in Long Creek, North Carolina in 1892. She moved to Wilmington, North Carolina and attended school until she was forced to drop out in sixth grade. Her family needed help with money so she can, so she started working selling clams and oysters in her neighborhood. Evans didn't start drawing until she was 43 years old. In 1935, she had a spiritual experience. She heard God commanding her to draw. And for the next five decades, she was inspired to create. Many of her works are a reflection of her dreams and visions. Many Evans once said that my whole life has been dreams, sometimes day visions. They would take advantage of me. No one taught me to paint. It came to me. She would use materials she had around, such as crayons, notebook paper, and colored pencils. Her work was mostly symmetrical, and some included angels, rainbows, birds, flowers, and butterflies. Symmetrical balance is something that is shown in Minnie Evans' work. Symmetrical balance is when the arrangement of elements in a work of art are equally weighted on each side. If I drew a vertical line down the middle of this artwork, would the visual weight be the same on both sides? Asymmetrical balance is exactly the opposite. It occurs when you have different visual images on either side of a design, and yet the image still seems balanced. To be considered asymmetrical, a design needs to have unequal visual weight on either side, but those unequal visuals need to balance each other out. So, for example, in Van Gogh's Starry Night, the tall, dark structure on the left is equally balanced out by a completely different element on the right, which is the moon. Therefore, it has a symmetrical balance. Mini Evans' style is connected to Surrealism, which is a 20th century avant-garde movement in art and literature in which ideas, images, and objects are combined in a strange way, like in a dream. Avant-garde in art means that it is new or unusual and has some experimental ideas. Some characteristics of surrealist art are using dreamlike visuals, symbolism, and collage images. Here's another artist that is part of the surrealist movement. His name is Rene Magret. This is his oil painting, The Son of Man, painted in 1964. We can see he oddly placed a floating apple in front of the man's face. Oh, let me go back. Salvador Dali was another primary figure of the Surrealist movement. This is an oil painting, The Persistence of Memory, painted in 1931. The melting clocks are very odd and dreamlike as well. Many of them started working as a gatekeeper at an estate in 1948. For 24 years, she was surrounded by gardens, trees, and lakes. Looking at this drawing, we can see that environment influenced her work as well. The bright colors in the floral motifs were most likely inspired by the trees and flowers she saw day to day. How does Minnie Evans' work show the African American culture? Here are two traditional art forms based in Africa. One is a basket weaving, and the other is the traditional African mask. African bas baskets use a variety of colors, and so does Evans. Evans was raised by her grandmother and was told stories about her enslaved ancestors. Her grandmother also loved to weave. Evans' early exposure to all of this impacted her artwork. We can see in her art how the proportions in the face reflect the similar proportions in the traditional African mask. So looking at this mask, we see that the nose is very elongated. If we go back to this drawing, the nose is the same way, proportion-wise. Minnie Evans' work is also relatable to folk art because she is making that connection to her African roots. Her work is defined more as fine art, though, because it is realistic. She shows symbolism in her work, and it functions more than just a decoration. And here's another interesting um, quotation from her. 
I have no imagination. I never plan a drawing. They just happen. 